Hey there, this is your host, Dr. Lori Friesen, and you're listening to episode number 214 of Beginning Teacher Talk. Just because you're a beginning elementary teacher, there is no need for you to struggle like one. I'm dedicated to being the mentor for you that I wish I had when I first started teaching. In this podcast, we talk about all of the behind the scenes stuff about teaching you really need to know, but didn't learn when you were in university. And we share the most amazing resources, tips and strategies out there so you can become the teacher you've always dreamed of being. Let's start the show. Well, hey there, and welcome back to the podcast. Oh my gosh, we are going to have so much fun today. If you know me, you know how much I love Halloween. So today we're going to talk all about 22, and 22 is actually my favorite number, so it's kind of cool that it ended up to be 22. I really didn't even try for that. It was like 14 and then 15, and I'm like, oh, but we have to mention this one. So anyway, I ended up at 22, which is my favorite number, so I will take that as a great sign. We're going to talk about 22 Halloween. Halloween class party games for elementary classrooms and how to manage all of that seasonal Halloween energy. Another one of the 1,465 things that they didn't teach us in college about teaching elementary school is all of that seasonal energy. Whenever something special is coming up, it seems like it's always happening in the classroom, doesn't it? Like it doesn't matter what it is. It's the beginning of the school year. Everybody's so excited. It's Halloween. Everybody's so excited. It's going to be winter break or Christmas. If you celebrate Christmas, everybody's so excited. It's going to be Thanksgiving. We're going to have a holiday. Everyone's so excited. I mean, it seems like every single month of the school year, if you really think about it, then we have the 100th day of school in January, and then we have Valentine's Day, and then we have St. Patrick's Day, and then, I mean, many of us celebrate Easter. I mean, it feels like it's constant. So if we don't find ways to manage and prepare for all of that seasonal Halloween energy, we are going to be exhausted by the end of the school year. So I'm going to start sharing with you different ways to manage and funnel and harness and really still enjoy that energy that your kids come to school with, with all of these things that are happening in their lives. A little while ago in one of my emails, I wrote to everybody, if you're on my email list, you've gotten this email, maybe you didn't read it, I'm not sure, but I was talking about how it's like towards the end of September, what happens is all of my sweet angels who were just amazing with me from the beginning of the school year, we've had this honeymoon period, it's like the moment that all of the Halloween costumes come out in the aisles of Walmart, my sweet little angels turn into like gremlins. They like, they were so cute, so sweet. And it's like they, I don't know if it's all the sugar that starts coming out at that time of the year. If they just get a little more sugar in their diets. I see a lot of Halloween snacks in their lunches and Halloween candy and treats already. It's just everywhere in all the stores. And I think that can be really challenging for us. So we're going to talk about how to make a Halloween class party really fun and how to keep your students engaged and keep all of that energy actually funneled into something that's going to be positive for everybody. Now to make this easier for you, I've divided these 22 class party game ideas into different sections. So the first section is all about great games and activities for small groups or centers. So if you want to do small groups or centers for your Halloween party, these are some great ideas for you. The second section is Halloween party games that you can play with the whole class. And the third section are great ideas for activities that you can do while your students are eating. If you're going to be having a little bit of food at your Halloween party, to keep them from getting a little bit too wild. So if you're having Halloween snacks or treats in your classroom as part of your Halloween party, these are great activities you can do with your students while they're eating to keep them in the Halloween spirit and to keep things a little bit more settled and focused. And finally, I'll end with a great and very simple activity you can do with your students when they need to burn off a little bit of extra Halloween energy. So if at any point during your party, you think, okay, this is getting a little bit too wild and you want them to burn off some energy, I have an idea to end with for you. Okay, so let's start with great games and activities for small groups or centers. So if you decide that you'd like to organize your Halloween party as centers, this can be a great way to keep the noise level down while also letting your kids do some fun activities and burn off some of that excitement and energy that comes with Halloween. Now, the activities I'm going to suggest for you here 
are extra fantastic because they don't cost a lot of money. They are very easy to set up and they don't require a lot of prep. Those are my favorite kinds of Halloween activities when I decide to use centers for my parties. However, if you have parents volunteering in your classroom during your Halloween party, if you've set that up and Uh, If you're part of the Ready for School Academy, I teach you how to do this at the beginning of the school year to set yourself up for success for the whole year. I highly recommend that you invite some parents to come in and help with your Halloween party. And I'll show you how you can involve them in just a minute. I love having parents at each of these centers to help the kids to stay on task. And especially when you're playing games during centers to ensure that everything stays fair and that there aren't any arguments or no arguments break out as part of your centers because you don't want to spoil the fun with two kids getting into a fight, right? Now, if you don't have access to parent volunteers, If you are book buddies with an upper elementary class, it can be super helpful to invite some of your book buddies to be part of your Halloween Center activities. I know I did this with my dear friend who was teaching upper elementary when I was teaching elementary school, and she set it up as a very special treat for five or six of her sixth grade students. At that time, sixth grade was still part of our elementary school, and when she moved to fifth grade, we did it with her fifth grade class. But for five or six of her students to come to my party to be able to help with their games. So it was something they had to earn in her classroom. And it was really fun for my students to have someone in fifth or sixth grade come and help us with our parties. Now you might want to ensure that you give your volunteers some kind of little prizes like Halloween treats or even Halloween themed erasers or pencils or something like that, that they can use as prizes at their center to help keep the kids focused and engaged and on task the entire time. It's just really nice to have those little incentives at the centers themselves. Okay, so the first game that I have for you as a center is so much fun. It's disgusting. It's got a disgusting name. It's called Eyeball Trash Get Ball. Okay, so to play this game, all you need is one of those rubber plastic eyeballs that you see everywhere in the dollar stores at this time of the year, or some kind of a ball that you can put an eyeball on or make it look like an eyeball. And you need a small trash can. And you could also use a pumpkin if you wanted to, like one of those plastic pumpkins. Just divide the small group into two teams, and then you can use a small whiteboard to keep track of your points. Put a piece of tape on the floor and let students know what distance they need to toss their little eyeball into the trash can from. And I also like to put a couple of students on either side of the trash can so they can quickly grab any like lost eyeballs, (laughs) any rebounds, (laughs) so that the game keeps moving and you don't have a ball bouncing across your classroom. Then you just keep a tally of which team gets the most points in the trash can or in your pumpkin as they play. And at the end of the time at that station, you just add up the points and see which team wins. And again, you might want to give a small candy or something like that to the team that wins if you have an adult or a student managing this game for you. And by the way, if you don't have anyone managing the game for you, if it's just the students who are playing, make sure you teach them the rules of the game before you start. And you also might want to give the students a little punch card in groups. So for example, if a whole group is at eyeball trash ball first, they could have a punch card as a group. And as you're walking around the classroom checking on them, you can give them a punch if they're on task and if they're helpful to each other and being kind to each other and if there's no problems. And then that way at the end, the group with the most punches wins some kind of a prize. So you could do that as well if you don't have parents or volunteers helping you. All right. Secondly, pumpkin concentration. Very easy to make. Once you've made it once, you have it every year. So I love games like this. So all you do is print some of your favorite Halloween vocabulary onto pumpkin clip art, make two copies on cardstock and laminate them so that they last from year to year. And then kids place them face down. I like to use about 24 cards so that there's enough that they have to, they can't remember where everything is, but they're placed face down. And then the kids turn over two cards at a time and take turns trying to remember where the previous vocabulary was because each time they find a match, they get to keep the pair and the person with the most pairs wins the game. So I love this game for centers, especially because it requires that everybody continue to pay attention as they watch other people turn over the cards that they might need for their match. And it's a great activity for centers as well because if they finish their game, it's very easy to mix up the cards and play again so they can play for as long as the center time is. Now, third is a simple, Halloween word search. So you can pretty much download a Halloween word search anywhere on the internet. Just Google the words Halloween word search and you can find lots of examples on TPT and on other websites that you can grab and use and print right away in your classroom. And these make such 
easy center activities. And I especially like them on Halloween because it's a calmer activity, especially if you put it after something like trash ball or something more active, it can calm the energy again and requires that kids just calm down and focus a little bit. And again, if you have a parent volunteer or a book buddy at the center, you can turn it into a game if you want to, because anytime you turn anything into a game, everybody wins. Kids love it. So you tell the students that the person who either finishes their word first word search first or gets the word search done at all wins a little prize. So you can incentivize all of your students by letting them know that anyone who finishes will get a little treat or a little prize. Okay, number four, this is a really fun one. This is called Stack Up Ghost Cups, and I'll link to um, where you can see an example of this on a website called Party Plan. It's really cute. So this is such an easy activity to set up, and it's super engaging for kids, especially on Halloween. So here's how it works. You just get some clear or white plastic cups, and using a Sharpie with the cups facing down, you create little eyes on each of the cups so that they look like ghosts. And then kids take turns building a structure and see how large of a pyramid that they can build using the stacked cups. So if you want a little extra layer of fun, you could also time students and give them only a minute or two minutes. Just use one of those little plastic timers from the dollar store. See how many cups they can stack within a minute or two minutes and have your students take turns to see who can stack the most cups in a designated amount of time. Now, of course, this is harder to do if you don't have a parent volunteer or an older student helping. So you could also do this activity as a whole class game if you don't have any extra extra help at your centers. Okay, number five, this one is so much fun. It's called Spider Races. I love this game. It's so simple and so easy to set up. So basically you take a piece of white poster board. You need some kind of a surface that will slide easily. So I like using the side of the poster board that's a little more slick, like a little more glossy for this game but you give your students two straws so they're in teams so two students two straws and two plastic spiders and the goal of the game is to get the spiders from one end of the poster board to the other end of the poster board by blowing into the end of the straw to move the spider so it's just purely by the their breath that the spider moves it's really cute kids love it it's super engaging super fun to do at any grade. And you'd be surprised by how hard it is to get the spiders across. So just make sure you try it out before you play with the kids to make sure that the spiders that you've chosen are light enough for them to be able to move it with their straws. So you can check at the dollar store, but you can get those really tiny little plastic um, spiders that work really well for this. Okay, let's talk about whole class games. This is so much fun. I love doing whole class games with my class. So every Halloween, I love to build in at least a couple of whole class games so that everybody could join in the fun together. So I'm going to share a bunch of ideas with you and hopefully there will be something inside all of these ideas that's going to resonate with you and that you think sounds really fun to try in your classroom. So the first one is a beanbag toss game. So you can either create your own beanbag toss game for Halloween or you can purchase a ready-made one from Amazon. But to make this yourself, you just go get a few plastic pumpkins or witch cauldrons, you know, from the dollar store and place them at a distance from where the kids are going to throw their bean bags, and mark the floor with a piece of brightly colored tape so kids know where to throw their bean bags from. It's even more fun if you want to blindfold the kids. I tried this one here. They just loved it to make it a little bit harder. So if they get the bean bag in the pumpkin or the witch's cauldron, they earn a little piece of candy. So simple and so fun. Or you can divide your class into teams and then they, the team with the most points at the end wins a little treat or a little prize. And also you don't have to use prizes. You could have that group be able to start the next game first, or you could have them be able to line up first for recess or whatever it is. It doesn't have to just be food rewards. All right. Number seven is Halloween bingo. Love this because it teaches seasonal vocabulary. Kids don't realize how much they're learning, but you can make your own version of Halloween bingo yourself, or you can purchase this again, ready-made from Amazon. I usually see games like this as a great investment because There's nothing like opening your Halloween bin each year and seeing the growing bundle of games and activities that I've left for myself from the previous year. And by the way, on the organizational side of things in your classroom, if you haven't already done this, I highly recommend that you start a box or a bin for each holiday or special season throughout the year and keep a copy of everything you do for that day or season so that you have it ready to go for next year. There is seriously nothing sweeter than that feeling of gratitude for yourself when you realize that you're not starting from scratch again the next year. 
when you have this growing bundle of resources and games and activities that you can reuse each year, it's so worth it. So each year I would invest in one or two more games. And then I had so many great things to choose from for the next year as I kept building up my little reservoir of goodies. And this is especially true also if you have kids of your own and you want to have a Halloween party for them at your house. Such a great investment. All right, number eight, I like to call it Frankenstein's Diner. I don't know if anyone else calls it this, but this is a really fun one, especially when you have some really brave kids in the bunch who like to show off. You know, the ones who are like, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do anything. I love those kids for this game. So for this activity, I love to get like a special Halloween tablecloth and a little plate and a napkin and set up like a little table at the front of the classroom. (laughs) You might even want to get a fake candle and turn off some lights to set the mood. You could put on some Halloween music, whatever. But what you do is you invite two kids, what I would call my victims, to the front of the classroom and you blindfold them. And then you put their first food item on the table. And the trick is that when we bring the food out, nobody is allowed to say anything. So sometimes they gasp. Sometimes kids make little noises and it's kind of like gives them clues, but they're not allowed to say anything. So they might be like, oh, like, oh no, or oh, something like that. Whatever they, whatever kind of response they want, but they can't say anything. They can't give any clues. So once we bring the food out, we tell the blindfolded children what they're going to be eating. And of course, it's a disgusting name, not the real thing that they're actually eating. So for example, you could tell them, welcome to Frankenstein's Diner. Now today you're going to have for your first course, worms. And they'll be like, oh, gross, which of course are actually cold spaghetti noodles, right? Or you could tell them, okay, for an appetizer today, we're going to eat an eyeball at Frankenstein's Diner. And they'll be like, ah, gross, right? But watching them eat it when it's actually a peeled grape is like really funny. Another one I love to use is a Frankenstein's finger, which is of course a mini hot dog. So, so many fun things that you can do with this. And once the kids start realizing, okay, that's all actually normal things, but it just sounds really gross, more and more kids will probably volunteer to do this. And in the show notes for this episode, I'll link to a website that has 20 different ideas that you can use for this game. Because I don't know if you're anything like me, but I had a hard time coming up with ideas for it. Very creative and so much fun to play with kids. So if you want to try that one out, I'll link to that idea for you in the show notes so you can find it. Okay, number nine is a really fun one too. It's called ping pong pumpkin toss. So basically, if you have a large table in your classroom, kids have to try to bounce a ping pong ball or an eyeball, if you want, on a table to get it into a plastic pumpkin or some kind of container that's a Halloween themed container. So lots of really fun ways that you can play this game. If you think that would be too hard for your kids, you can challenge them to throw like a plastic plastic spider into a plastic pumpkin. It's basically like a toss game, but using different things. Okay, next is the inflatable witch hat ring toss game. I don't know if you've seen this on Amazon, but it looks so much fun. I haven't tried it myself, but it looks like so much fun. So again, I suppose you could make this one up by yourself if you had a stable witch hat. I'm not sure how you'd make it, but I saw this one on Amazon. I thought it would be so much fun for kids. Basically, it's just a ring toss game with a witch hat and rings that kids can toss to get around the witch hat. And of course, the student or team that gets the most rings on the witch hat wins. And I noticed that there are a lot of different options options for beanbag toss games that you can get. There's an inflatable spider ring or like all different kinds of things, or there's a variety pack. So I'll link to those for you in the show notes if you want to check out any of them. If you're like, oh, I'd like to do a toss game or something in my classroom, I'll link to those for you as well. Now, another one that you can do with your students, which is very easy to prepare, but also is gets the kids up and moving and having some fun is just a find someone who activity. So again, there are a lot of these on the internet that you can check out, but basically a Halloween themed find someone who activity asks kids to find someone who, for example, loves Halloween or hates Halloween or is going trick or treating tonight or has dressed up as a ghost or find someone who has been to a haunted house. And the first student to fill in the entire grid with other students who have said yes to any of these options win some kind of a treat or a prize. So again, something really fun that kids can do. You could also have them do this in pairs. And so the first pair to win, get some kind of a prize. Okay, number 14 is pass the pumpkin. So this is basically the Halloween version of pass the potato or hot potato. So for this game, you would put on some of your favorite Halloween music, like maybe Monster Mash, have your students sit in a circle and pass a small plastic or plush pumpkin from one person to the next. And if they're holding the pumpkin when the music stops, 
they're out. And the game continues until the last person holding the pumpkin wins and they get some kind, again, of a little prize. But a very simple time filler game or a little game you can play to calm everybody down and keep everybody involved in having in doing something fun. So you might also want to have some kind of a coloring sheet or a word search or something like that for kids to do at their desks when they have to leave the game or if they were holding the pumpkin when the music stopped so that you don't have kids bored and getting into trouble when they're no longer actively part of the game. So you could just keep some really good Halloween books also on hand for kids to read while they're waiting for the game to finish. If you want some great ideas, by the way, for great Halloween books, I'll link to a list of 24 of my favorite Halloween books of all time. So you can check out that list as well. Okay, number 15 is called Pin the Eye on the Monster. No game would be complete without one of these, right? Again, you could create your own version of this game by printing some clip art of a monster and some eyeballs, or you can purchase a super colorful, cute version of this game from Amazon. It's less than $10 but depending on your budget, you could just create this yourself. Again, if you have parent volunteers in your classroom who are helping with your Halloween party, they could also include this activity as one of your center activities if you decide to go the center route for the majority of your Halloween party. Really fun game. Or you can get another variation of this game, which I think would be more difficult to make yourself though, and that's pin the spider on the web. But this game is again, really well rated on Amazon. It costs less than $10. So it just depends what you're into if you want to play pin the eye on the monster or pin the spider on the web. Oh my gosh, this is making me miss my classroom so much. I want to play all these games with my kiddos. Okay, number 17 and the last of the whole class games is an egg and spoon race, but with eyeballs, of course. (laughs) This is a podcast. I've never said eyeballs so many times in one podcast. Anyway, you can easily create your own version of this game or you can purchase one ready made from Amazon as an example. But all you need are some of those plastic eyeballs that seem to be everywhere, like I said, at this time of the year and some larger plastic spoons. Put your kids into two teams, mark a designated start and stop point and have two students race at a time. And each student who wins earns a little piece of Halloween candy. Or another thing that I've done before is if you've purchased those chocolate eyeballs that you can get at this time of the year, I usually just let my kids eat their eyeballs. <laughs> it's disgusting. That's a really weird sentence. Anyway, I just let my students eat their eyeballs when they're done, no matter who wins. Okay, now let's talk about some great games when the class is eating their snacks. So if you're having a Halloween party and the kids are sitting at their desks and they're eating their snacks, sometimes you want a little bit of entertainment or something easy to do while the kids are eating. And so one of the games I like to play at this time is called like the headbands guess the word game. So basically you write a bunch of Halloween themed words on cards and you can clip them to a headband one at a time. And the kids take turns giving the teacher one word clues to help us guess the word or you can have a student wear the headband and they have the word clipped to their headband and the rest of the kids have to give them one word clues to have them figure it out what the headband says so that's a really simple and easy game to be playing it's kind of like a conversation that the kids can keep having while they're eating and anyone who wants to participate can or you could also play Halloween charades using the same words so while everyone's sitting around eating their food you could be playing Halloween charades with anybody who wants to act out some of the Halloween themed words that you have prepared for them. Okay, number 20 is called Pumpkin Five Facts. So it's really simple. Basically, in advance of the party, you would have everyone write five facts about themselves. And then when you have a few minutes or during that time when the class is eating their snacks, you would read out the five facts on one of the pumpkins and have everyone try to guess who it is. So just another fun way that you can get everybody involved. And another variation of this, of course, number 21 is two truths and one lie. So everyone has to guess which of the two are truths and which is the lie for each of the students. Okay, and finally, number 22, if at any point during your party when your kids need to burn off some extra energy, I love to do a freeze dance to Halloween music. So I'll attach some great ideas for Spotify playlists that I found for you for Halloween music that's appropriate for the classroom. But if they just need to burn off some of that energy that they so often have around Halloween, especially if they're dressed up in costumes, that's even worse. I would put on some music and let them dance, dance, dance. And then when it stops, the music stops, they have to freeze in whatever kind of position they're in and you can reward a little treat or something to anyone who has a crazy cool expression or something like that too. But just a really fun way to get kids moving and up and dancing and also 
the freeze is really fun. And you can have them freeze in different ways. I've also done this where, you know, when they freeze and you say, okay, the next freeze, I want you to give me the craziest face you can. Or the next freeze, I want you to only have one like leg touching the ground. Or the next freeze, I want you to, whatever it is. You can have lots of different variety. Ask your kids what kinds of ideas they have. But that's a really fun way to get the kids up and moving, but also in kind of a controlled and focused way. All right. So there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed hearing a bunch of my favorite Halloween party games. Again, I'll link to any of the resources or Amazon goodies that I found if you want to invest in some of these games and you don't want to make them from scratch. Either way, I hope you have a wonderful Halloween with your students. Again, if you want to check out some of my favorite Halloween books, I will also link to 24 of my favorites in the show notes for this episode. All right, my friends, I hope that you have a wonderful week as always. And until next time, remember, just because you're a beginning elementary teacher, there's no need for you to struggle like one. Bye for now.